Hi guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to grow your own crystals using borax and pipe cleaners. It's a very simple process. Um, so I'll be showing you a few different things you can do with the borax crystals. Um, one is you can make necklaces like this with just a few items. Um, you can also make them into rings or pendants. And then you can also do just home decor, something like this. Or you can leave them raw without the silver or gold finish. Um, that's what that looks like. You can also get larger crystals. So if you see these ones compared to the size of these ones. So you can change the shape or type of crystal that you get. And then like I said before you can get different colors. So the different products I used for this project. The first thing you're going to need is borax, and that's what the packaging looks like. I picked this up in the detergent aisle at my supermarket, and borax is just a mineral that's used for cleaning. You put it in your laundry, you can use it to clean your toilets, it's pretty universal stuff. You're also going to need your food coloring. You can use gel or you can use the drops, either one will work fine. Um, you can use whatever color you like. If you're going to be making your crystals into jewelry, you may want to pick up some of this liquid leaf. It comes in gold and silver. I used the silver today. The packaging for that looks like this. You can get it at Michael's for about $10. They also sell it at Hobby Lobby. I'm sure pretty much every um, craft store will carry it or something similar to it. Like You're going to need your pipe cleaner, which looks like this. You can pick that up at the dollar store or any craft store. I used white. Of course you can use any color you like, just know that it will show through the crystals. You're also going to need your jewelry making equipment, so facets or something along those lines. This has rings and closures. I'm using chain. You could also use cord. Um, if you're making a ring, you're going to need your ring back so they look like this. They're just flat on the top. You can get them in gold and silver. Again, those are at the craft store or you can pick them up on Amazon or eBay. They're pretty inexpensive. You get a big pack of them for next to nothing. And then you'll need some kind of strong glue. So something like this or E6000. Um, that's what I use to attach the actual ring part here. For the ladies that do nails, you can also use acrylic. That would work as well. You're going to need some form of string to suspend your creation. Um, you can use fishing line like this, dental floss, yarn, string, anything you have that you can tie. Um, for this demonstration I'll be using this cheap spool of fishing line which I believe I got at the dollar store like forever ago. Some other things you may need is a pair of scissors and then just some pliers or jewelry making tools. You're also going to need some kind of stick to suspend your item. I'm using these skewers. I got them at the dollar store. Again very inexpensive. You can also you can also pick them up at the grocery store, usually in the barbecue section. You could also use chopsticks, um, an orange wood stick, I mean anything will work. You just need something that's going to be able to tie your string to and suspend your item. The other thing you might need is some saran wrap, a piece of plastic, or something to cover it once you've got everything in there. And then the other thing is a glass bowl or cup or mason jar, anything. Um, this is really easy to clean so it's not going to damage the item, it's just easier to clean if it's in glass. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this up, I'll show you guys how we're going to actually mix everything and then I will show you how we're going to wrap the different shapes that you need. Um, so like I said, if you want to do the circles, the long ones, or the flat ones, you know, it's whatever you can come up with will work. So I'll go ahead and show you one of those and then you can go from there. So when getting started with this project, whichever one you're choosing to do, the first thing you need to do is you need to get your pipe cleaner design ready. So you're just going to start by linking together your pipe cleaners. If you're just using one pipe cleaner, then obviously you're going to skip this step. So for this, so for this shape, I'm going to be doing three. So I'm going to go ahead and link those in. And basically what I've given myself is just one huge pipe cleaner that's all connected. So I'm going to start at one end of the pipe cleaner and I'm just going to start coiling that around itself. So what I mean by that is I'm going to make a circle and I'm just going to keep following that shape. 
And now you'll be able to bend this more into shape at the end of it. Um, it just depends what shape you're going for, how large you want to make it. It's very pliable because there's a piece of wire inside of here, so you're going to be able to do lots of things with it. Um, I'm just giving you the basic idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep coiling this until I get past that second junction. So here's the first one. And I'm just holding it in my fingers so that it keeps that shape. Now once I get to that second junction, which is what I have here, I'm going to start weaving my end through. And this is just going to add stability to that. And I'm just going to turn that a little bit and I'm going to keep weaving. Now if you get to the end of this and you feel like you need some more stability in the shape that you're doing, you can always add on another pipe cleaner. Um, for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and stop here. And you're just going to tuck in your ends. And so this is the shape that I came out with. Of course, you can refine this and adjust it as you wish. Now you can have some holes or gaps in the design. Those will get filled with crystals, but you don't want to have any gaping holes. You want to try and fill that in. And you, and you would just do that by maneuvering the wire around and kind of fiddling with it until you get the shape you like. Now if you're making this kind of shape, you would just bend over your wire and then wrap it around and kind of weave it through. So if you're going to be doing a pendant on that design or this one or any other one that you come up with, you're going to want to add your eye pin before you actually put it into the solution. Um, so you're going to pick your spot, whichever side you think is top. You're going to put your eye pin through, and I'll actually move you guys in a little bit for this part. You're going to put your eye pin through what you consider the top of the design. So for me, I have two loops here at the top. And I'm actually going to try to go through both of those for stability. And I'm just going to go ahead and bend this a little bit with my fingers and then I'll grab my pliers. So you can see I have it through the hoop there. I'm going to bend that up just a little bit with my finger so I can see where that eye hook's going to land. If I don't like it there, you can always bend it a little further down. It just depends, but you want to leave a little bit of room at the top because your crystals are going to grow. And so if you go too shallow, so if you put it down here, you're going to lose that eye pin in the actual crystals itself. So that's why I'm leaving a little bit more room there on the neck. And you're going to just take this long piece and you're going to start wrapping it around that shorter one, so where that eye pin is right here. So I'm sorry if the am camera angle is hard to see, but... So hopefully you can see that. So I'm just taking this piece of wire and I'm going to start wrapping it around there. And then once I get close to the top, I'm just going to take the actual wire cutter part of this. I'm going to snip it as close as I can. Taking that little tail and I'm just going to tuck that in. So just like that. You can see where I wrapped it around there. And then there's the eye pin. And then you're ready to submerge this into the water. So the next step is to attach your string. And you're just going to double that over for the length that you think you're going to need. Snip it. If you have an eye pin, you can just put it right through that loop. So that it's kind of dangling like that. And you're just going to tie a knot. It doesn't have to be anything pretty because this is going to be removed after we're done soaking it. So just like that, so you'll be able to hang it. And then if you're working on a piece like this that doesn't have an eye hook, you're going to follow the same thing. You're going to get your piece of string or fishing line. You're going to pick a spot in your design, so this one's the circle. 
and I'm just going to pick a random spot to put that through. And just like before, I'm going to take my two ends and I'm going to tie a knot. So just like that, kind of like you're making a Christmas ornament. So these are ready to submerge. I'm going to go ahead and create my solution for you guys and I'll show you how we do that. So here I have a tall glass. Um, this is actually from the dollar store. Again, you can use a mason jar, anything that's going to be able to hold boiling water without melting. I have my stick here, and then I have my item that I'm going to be soaking. So what you want to do before you put in the borax or the coloring or anything is you want to place your item into the water, and you, and you want to see where it lands inside the vessel that you're using, so whatever you're using. So what you want to make sure is that it's completely submerged, that it's not touching the sides, and that it's not touching the bottom. If you meet all of those criteria, then you're fine. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out and set it off to the side while I work with the borax. So here I have the borax, and it's just a white powder. I'm going to be using a spoon to put it in there, and I just did this instead of the box so that it's easier to show you guys on camera. So the actual measurements that you're going to be using is for every cup of boiling water that you use, you're going to put in three tablespoons of borax, and that'll get you the classic size crystals like this. Now if you want larger crystals, like this piece here, what you're going to do is you're going to actually add more borax from there. So another way that you can do it is you're just going to add your borax. And you're going to start stirring it. Your mixture is going to go kind of milky in color. And what you're going to notice is on the bottom there's a little bit of powder and you want to get that worked into the liquid. If you see no more powder at the bottom then you can add more borax. But once you notice that it's no longer incorporating, that there's a little bit of sediment at the bottom that's not mixing into the boiling water, then you know you've added enough borax. So I'm getting to that point where I see a little bit of powder at the bottom and it's no longer absorbing into the water. So I know that I can stop. Burn yourself. So once you have that settlement at the bottom, your mixture is really milky, you're going to go ahead and add your food coloring. The more food coloring you add, the more intense this is going to be. And so I'm going to go ahead and add this and speed it up. Now, if you wanted the larger crystals, this is where you would stop. You would take your mixture that you have here and you would pop it into the microwave for two minutes and you would stir it up. And what you would notice is that the borax that was at the bottom here that hadn't liquefied or is no longer powdery. And then you would add more borax. This is going to give you larger crystals. The more borax you put, the bigger the crystals. And again, you would just stir that up. And then you're going to go ahead and take your item that you're putting in there, put it in with your stick on the side so that it's not going to go all the way down. And then you're going to take your piece of saran wrap, you're going to cover that, and you're going to place it off to the side somewhere. Now this needs to sit for at least eight hours. Um, you can do longer than that. The longer you leave it, the more crystals you're going to get. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. When you pull your item out of the borax, what you're going to notice is on the string that you've made, there's going to be some crystals. So what you're going to do is you're just going to remove those with your hand. They're fairly fragile. You're going to get to the string to where you can actually cut it. And you're just going to snip it off and pull out the string that you used. When you remove these from the liquid, you're going to set them off on a piece of paper towel and you're going to let them air dry. Once they've air dried, you can go ahead and snip off the excess crystals in the string that you have. This one I let air dry for a day so it's ready to either leave this way or to apply the paint. Once your crystals dried, you can decide whether or not you want to paint it or leave it alone. If you're going to leave it alone, then it's fine. You can just set it aside and it's done. If you want to paint it, you want to make sure that it's completely dry before you start painting it. So I'm going to show you how I did this. 
making like a home decor item. So the first thing you need to do is you need to pick which side you want to keep and which side you want to cover up. With this particular paint, I do recommend using a brush that you really don't care about because it is pretty much ruined after that. So you're just going to get the paint and you're just going to start painting that, working it through. You want a kind of stiff brush so that you can work it into the actual cracks and crevices. Now if you want the silver or gold to show on the other side, you're going to have to go up on the sides so that you can decide how far up you want to go. So for me, I just want a little ridge around it. And that way when it's sitting on the counter or wherever you have it, you'll be able to see a little bit of that silver, but you'll still get the main surface will be that crystal that you created. And once you've done that, you're just going to turn it over and let it dry, and then that crystal's done. So here's what that one looks like after it's been painted. It's still a little bit wet, so I'm trying not to handle it too much. There's the back of it. And then, like I said, I just went around the lip a little bit so that you would see the silver when it's sitting down on your counter or wherever you have it. But you still get that crystal coming through. So I also went ahead and painted the top of this one. And then I did the border of this one, but honestly, I think I should have left this one alone because it had those nice, pretty um, crystals, but I can always redo it. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you, I did that. That's what the back of that one looks like. And then I have another green one here um, with an eye pin. And I did the same thing. And then here's a green one that I had done um, in that same style with the silver around the edge and then that's what the back looks like. So if you're going to be making a ring, um, you would follow all the same steps. You would get to the point where you paint if you want to. Let that dry completely and then you're going to apply the back piece there. Like I said, I chose to use glue to attach mine. So here's what that looks like. It's just a flat piece and then you have your ring component. So if this was going to be the ring, you would just flip it over and kind of decide where you want to place the ring at, where it's going to fit the nicest. And then you're going to get your glue. I'm using this particular glue. Um, this is really similar to E6000. You could also use E6000 if you prefer. And then you're just going to put down some glue. And I know that's clear so it's kind of hard to see. So there's the glob of glue, and I'm just literally going to press that down into the glue. And then I'm going to use the nozzle of this, and I'm going to actually put that glue around the backing of the silver part of it. And this is just going to kind of reinforce it. And then I'm also going to do it right over the center there. I'm going to set that off. You're going to follow the directions for the glue that you're using. This one takes 24 hours to dry completely. And then I'm just going to set that off. This one's already had a chance to dry. So once you put it on your finger, that's what it would look like. Let me remove my other one so you can see. Of course, you can do something smaller, different color, whatever you like. I mean, the whole point is that this is something you can customize to yourself. So the final way that you can do this is to make an actual pendant. So I have my piece here that I want to make into a pendant. It already has the eye pin in there which I showed you how to attach. So for the necklace part of this you're going to need your chain cut to the length you want. I usually do about 20 inches but again you can do that however you like. You're going to need your connectors and your back. So you have a couple different options. You have the ones that twist into themselves like this one here. You have your lobster which looks like that or you have your round one which looks like that. You can just pick whichever one you like, but first thing you need to do is you need to attach a ring. So that's what that looks like. Sorry, I have paint on my hand there. So you're just gonna grab your ring. So you're just gonna open that by sliding it open like that. You're gonna go ahead and put that through your eye pin and then close that up. So that's what you're left with. 
that's where you're going to put your chain through. So for this one I'll go ahead and use these kind of barrel shaped clasps and they just unscrew like that and then screw in there. So you're going to get your two ends of your chain, set one aside, grab the one that you want to work with and just like before you're going to open up that little circle, open that up. You want to place the end of your chain through there and then you want to place one side of that closure and then you're going to go ahead and close that circle back up just like that. So this is what you're left with and then you're going to repeat that process on this side. You're going to grab your little connector Open that up, put your chain through, and then you're going to go back to this piece here, and you're just going to connect it. So that's what you have so far. You're going to close up that circle, and there's your closure. And then you can screw this open to put it on and take it off. And that gives you your chain. And again you can make the pendant any shape you like. You could also do um, this shape with a pendant. You would just need to add your eye pin before you put it into the water. So that's it for this tutorial. If you guys have any questions go ahead and leave them down below and as always thank you guys for watching.